Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial series we are talking about Spring Boot security together with Angular. And if you remember or if you have followed the previous videos you will see that we have finished our backend part. So we have implemented some endpoints um, and now we want to do the front end. From front end we currently have this, so this page here that you can see this is our front end, so how it looks like currently. And we are going to be doing some changes. So let's just not spend too much time and let's just get into it and I will be explaining the steps that we are going to do um, as we do it. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to create um, basically this proxy to the, our backend server. So as you may know, our Angular, our frontend runs on localhost 4200, but our backend runs on localhost uh, 8080. And now what we want to do is we want to proxy all of the calls to the slash API endpoint to some um, different port. So basically, if you go localhost for, uh, 4200 slash API, as described here, then you want to um, proxy it to something like this. So it won't be 3000 to be 8080. And what we are going to do is we are going to create this uh, proxy. So um, let's just get to it. We go back to our IntelliJ. And inside of our modules, we have the front end module, and inside of the front end module is where we want to create this file. So let me create it really fast and then I can show you what I did. And here it is. So this is something just for our local development where we are serving our application. We want to uh, use this proxy. And as you can see, so whatever goes to this slash API endpoint, uh, the target will change to the localhost 8080 because that's the port where our application is running. So where our backend is running and this is a not secure connection. And uh, one more thing unrelated to this, if you're having problems with your IntelliJ that it indexes uh, node modules, right click this node modules folder and mark directory as excluded. You had it here, so I can just cancel it. So it's uh, here, you can exclude it and then IntelliJ won't index it. It's just a small hint, so to get your IntelliJ nice up and running. And if you don't have the node modules, I, dis uh, I talked about it in the previous video, you have to run the command ng install. And, uh, ng install. So you have to run this and then you would get your node modules. And where to run it, you run it inside of your terminal inside of this path. So when you're in the front end module, so you would run it here, same way as you would run ng serve here to start the application. Yeah, so that's it uh, regarding our proxy. Um, now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to our visual code, visual studio code. So the the, the the reason I'm using this one and not IntelliJ is because just it's easier to handle the, the Angular stuff. If you want to use IntelliJ, you can do it. If you want to use something else, you can also do that. So it's really up to you. So let me open up our app component uh, TypeScript file. And as you can see here, there's not much. There's just a title and that's it. So we don't actually have to worry about this one. The, the one that we want to take care of is the HTML file. Basically what we have here is uh, a lot of uh, styling and some um, HTML elements that we don't actually want to have here. Basically we are only interested in this line, which means we can select everything up until here and delete it. Yeah, I know it looks bad, but trust me. So this router outlet is going to be used to show up uh, all of our um, uh, components that we are going to create. So when we have some other components, they are going to be showing up here. So we don't want to have anything else here. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, generate uh, a component, you know, so a different one. If you go back to, to Chrome, you can see that I have this page opened where it describes the Angular CLI generate command. So what this does is it allows you to generate all of these things. So components, directives, enums, gods, whatever, services, whatever you need. And how you do it is ng generate, then what you're generating, in our case component, and then some name. And of course you have some different options and stuff like that, but yeah, for us that's not really important. So what do we want to generate? We want to generate our login component. So how we do that? We go to IntelliJ, or you actually can open up a command prompt window in just inside of this folder. So you have to be inside of this folder and you go ng generate component and you 
uh, you just give it a name. Of course, you can go NGGC login. So without uh, full words, just the first letters that will also work. Hit enter and um, now your login component will be generated. And um, we are having some files. So we have login component HTML and the TS file. Those are the important ones. We don't want to worry too much about styling and stuff like this in this tutorial. So um, yeah, just ignore how it looks like. Now, if you go to uh, uh, Visual Studio, you see there is a login folder which contains these files. We have the, the TS file and we have the HTML file which just doesn't have much. So um, let me build the HTML first and then I'll show you what I did. So here it is. We have in our HTML, so the login component, we have a form uh, which we'll call the login uh, method. And inside of this, um, we have, oops, I have a small error here. And inside of this one, we have uh, two input fields, one for the username and one for the password. It's actually quite simple. What we want to do is you want to enter username, password, click login, and you are logged in. Okay, now let's um, close the app component. Let's go to the uh, login component TS file and uh, let's implement some stuff here. And then I'll get back to you to explain you what I did. And here it is. This is our login component. As you can see, we have added the model for our username and password that we are going to be providing from the HTML. We have a session ID, which I'll explain a bit later. And we have our login method. Inside of the login method, we have the URL and we have, um, we are using the HTTP client to make a post request to this URL with the username and password that we get from the model provided from the HTML page. And then on the uh, response, we subscribe to this uh, observable and then we um, have our response, which if it is sent back from the front end, uh, should contain the session ID, which we use to store as a token. And then we navigate to this route. And um, this is everything that we want to do, except if we don't have any response, then we just want to alert the user that the authentication failed for some reason. And I think that's everything from the for the login component. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, actually we want to go to the, the app module TS and we want to add the forms module uh, for our login form. So we want to extend that here. So let me just add it really fast. So here it is, our forms module and our HTTP client module. I forgot to mention that we also need that one. So for now, let's close this file and let's go back to IntelliJ to our terminal. And now uh, let's generate another component. Let's name this component um, something like home or whatever. So this will generate our home component, which we are going to be using to uh, move through from the login. So once you log in, you go to home. And uh, if you go back to Visual Studio, close the login component and open up the home folder that was just created. We go to the HTML and it has home works. And here uh, for now, we don't have anything, but we could, um, I don't know, show something here if we wanted to. But let's leave that out for now and um, let's move on to the, the next things. So we have generated our home component, we have generated our login component and did some changes to our application, but I think that's enough for this video. Um, I, we would start with the next one. Um, in the next one, we would like to um, extend our application to add some guards so that we can uh, be authenticated and also we want to add some um, routing and request interception. So it will be quite interesting tutorial. So stick with me and I guess I will see you in the next one.